what's good, everybody? How's it hanging? How's it happening? You guys know this is Kevin from the Chord Progression Podcast, sponsored by Dark Fusion Systems, the best for your custom compute needs, whether it's for gaming, streaming, uh, music, creative, business, whatever you need. Dark Fusion Systems has the proper PC build for you. Get $100 off your entire custom build. Use the code CPPOD at darkfusionsystems.com. Link to the podcast below. Now it's that feature presentation. A gigantic episode is coming your way. We have lost from While She Sleeps on the podcast today with the brand new album Self Help coming out on March 29th. We're diving deep into the album. We're diving deep into why they created it this way, why they are so thankful for the help of the Sleep Society, and just to get you ready for one hell of a ride that is this album. You guys ready? Let's go! Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of the Core Progression Podcast, you know we love Metalcore, and today, this is exciting, we have probably one of the biggest Metalcore bands from the UK on the podcast, it is insanely exciting, I am titillated, yes, I'm using the word titillated, the brand new (laughs) album from this band, Self Hell, is coming out on March 29th, and it's going to be an absolute banger, if you listen to the singles already, you know that to be true, And if you're in the U.S., they're going to be coming over with Architects in May. So you better get your tickets for it. And if you're going to be at that show in Chicago, find me in the pit because there is no way that I'm going to be missing this show. And there's no I'm not going to be the pit moshing these guys for every single song. So without further ado, please welcome Laz from While She Sleeps to the podcast. So Laz, welcome. Yo, what's up, bro? How you doing? Dude, I am doing fantastic, overjoyed, and I don't even know how else I could describe it, man. How are you doing today? It's been a beautiful day already, so how's it going on your end? Yeah, good, mate, good. Uh, we're just preparing, we're just currently sort of in the studio, sort of writing and um, sort of practicing for some stripped back like in-stores for the for the release week, sort of intimate shows, so that's really cool, some like alternate versions and stuff. I just want to say thanks for the enthusiastic uh, intro, man. I'm stoked that you're going to be at the show. And and yeah, we can't wait to get over to the States with Architects. It's going to be fun. Oh, dude, I've been looking forward to that show because I remember, I think it was two years ago, you guys came over to the US and it was like one of the shows you were playing. I just couldn't go to. Dude, I have having tickets for a different show that night. I'm just like, God, you got to be kidding me. I want to see you guys play, especially <laughs> after listening to Sleep Society and getting into that album. And now I'm just yeah. like, well, self hell is coming out. And now I get to get into this one. Got my ticket. Nothing stopped me from going to that show. Hell yeah. So I'm even more excited. So woohoo. Fuck yeah, bro. Love that shit. Yeah, I'll look forward to you in the pit then. I'll, I'll, well, I'll look forward to trying to keep an eye out for you in there and seeing what havoc you cause in. <laughs> oh, oh, if you see some guy that's just throwing people around, it's like, well, why the heck is that guy just having a blast looking like he's going crazy wearing a backwards baseball cap up? Oh, I know who that guy is. Interviewed me two <laughs> months ago. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Well, I do want to jump into the brand new album because it is something that, of course, everyone wants to know about. And there are three uh, tracks you guys already released on it by the time we record this with Self Held Down and To The Flowers. And so far from what I've been seeing, there has been nothing but positivity coming out from the release of these singles. Have you guys been seeing the same thing? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, when we released Self Hell as the first sort of title track and single from the new record, we kind of we wanted to ruffle a few feathers, you know what I mean? It's not necessarily like a style that people are used to hearing from our band, but, you know, we I think with this record, we've kind of changed things up a little bit, and I think the outcome is going to be very positive. We've, we've grown in confidence as a band, and I think this is helping us really, like, relax in the studio and have fun. Obviously, for us, you know, having the Sleep Society is, is a, is, 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 has been a crazy experience, but also it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a good way of us sort of working with our fan base. It's also given us confidence to try new things. And I think once you once you sort of come to the realization that you have a strong fan base behind you, it kind of allows you to relax a bit and uh, and just enjoy yourself in the studio sense. Um, and that's what we're doing, you know. It's a credit to our fan base. They always stick behind us. They always get involved with the messages that we're putting out there. And uh, yeah, just that's been a crazy good experience. And so, yeah, onward now, Self Hell's about to be released in a couple of weeks. And um, yeah, just excited for everyone to hear what we've been working on. Expect the unexpected. It goes for a, a few different genres and some stuff that you might not expect from while she sleeps. But yeah, we're stoked for everybody to hear it. Oh, I'm, I'm stoked for everyone to hear it as well, because I do agree when Self Hell, the, the teacher t- uh, single was released, even for myself, I was like, this is a little different than what even I expected. 
But I had to follow along like with what all the fans in Sleep Society probably are going to do where they're going to take solace in the message and know that it's you guys and be open to an evolving sound and where you guys are going to potentially experiment, especially if you have that confidence in the studio. So then you get to be able to take a little bit more into it. You're going to relieve yourself of some of those embedded expectations so that when you listen to some of the other songs, like when you guys got to down, I'm like, okay, this is a little bit more my style for you guys. Like this is what I'm a little bit more into when to the flowers came out and I got into that. I'm like over five minutes. This is going to be something I'm not expecting, but again, now I'm open to it. Let's see what happens. And right from the get go, I don't know what you guys did with that song. I don't know how you wrote that guitar part with that intro, but that is one of the most beautiful guitar parts, not only for the intro throughout the whole entire song that I have seen in recent memory. Yeah, thank you very much, man. I think what's really nice about our band is like we can put out stuff that's a bit more like metalcore or a bit hardcore esque, but then, you know, we can turn the corner and, and you have got this like heartfelt, emotional tune in there as well. And I think that's what's really great about our fan base that they're there for the heavy side of things, but they also like to be invoked with emotion as, as like we do, you know. I think that. What's really great about Cell Tell as a record, I think that it depicts kind of life quite well. You know, it's not all it's not all rainbows and butterflies. And I think that the sooner that you can get sort of comfortable in the uncomfortable and sort of learn from those things that are going through life and um, try and prevail through them. I think that you have you're, you're more comfortable with with things that life throws at you. So I think for me, like Cell Tell sort of represents that whole journey. Um, so yeah, it's it's interesting to see how the album goes down. Like I said, we're so stoked for everybody to hear it. So um, so yeah, can't wait. Well, I'm interested to see even more of it when it comes to some more of the experimentation you guys are going to work with. Given the fact that it's going to be a little bit more of a self reflective message on the overall album. And again, look yeah. at what we've gone through the past four years. Look what we went through during the pandemic. It's there's nothing that we're going to be able to control a lot of the times. And we just kind of have to just roll with the punches because if we try and control what we can't control, then we're going to end up living in this whole entire self hell. But if we do find the beauty that is in life, beauty that comes from, you know, the relationships we have with our family, with our friends, with our loved ones, just with life in general, enjoying the music that we love, enjoying just the times that we can have, we can potentially make the most out of any bad situation. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more, man. It's a, it's, it's not always an easy thing to get to a positive mindset, but I think that, you know, the more you can start internalizing some of these things and, you know, trying to move forward with, you know, negatives and, and make them into positives, I think you'll be in a better place. And it's a bit cliche, but, you know, it's that age old thing of like, no one else can love you before you love yourself. And I think that we're all kind of uh, victims of going through that ourselves at times you know like whether it's I don't know substance abuse or whether it's just giving ourselves just like a general hard time compared to like our peers or whatever it might be for you I think that there's lessons to be learned uh, and positives to take from from all those things well even think about you know loving yourself and having to have that first before really being able to go forward and really embrace what all is life take a look at other bands in the genre now, specifically I'm gonna go with Beartooth when they released the surface in 2023 Look at how much more open Caleb Shoma was with being positive, loving his overall self, overall being. And people are starting to take more to that message now than they were with some of the angrier stuff, even though I like the angrier sound a little bit more. But it's something where people, when they actually have that feeling of loving themselves and positivity, especially in music, no matter what the topic is, even if it's something deep that might go into something dark and bring up some traumatic experiences within your own mind. But it's something that's going to be done for the healing purposes of it to make you understand, make you love yourself going forward so that, you know, we can enjoy this life overall. We can find the beauty in it because there's so much other crap that's going on. Why focus in on all the crap all the time when, you know, we only get one shot at life. Life is beautiful at some point in time. Let's enjoy it and let's finally find that peace within our own self so that we can spread that all across, all across, you know, our, fr our family, our friends. And man, it's just like a great message to have in there. That's it. And I think that, you know, I think that bands are realizing as well, like not not like it's a new thing, but, you know, we're lucky enough to be able to stand on a stage in front of thousands of people and play a show. And I think that no matter how the message feels on the surface, While She Sleeps is always a band that wants to prevail through positivity. So, you know, it might be heavy, it might be screaming and, and, and kind of dark at times. But I think we've always been a band that, that wanted that to be the message, you know, like we we really do pride ourselves in the, on the community that we've managed to build surrounding the band. Um, the guys, 
we always say we could probably go and have a beer with like 90% of our fan base because they're all just fucking absolute chillers, um, which is great, you know. And I think from for someone like me going back like to when I first got into new metal, bands like Manson and Corn and Biscuit and, you know, all that stuff, like there was that huge sense of community, you know. You saw someone else in the, in the, in the same hoodie and you were just like, you know, that person fucking knows what I'm into. And, and it, it really was like, a cool vibe and I think that that's something that's always been important to me to have and I just think it's absolutely crazy that you know years later we've managed to build this fan base that understands our message and sort of appreciates what we're trying to do as a band and what we're saying and and responds positive positively to it like the like-minded people that we have in our crowd it, it's mind-blowing for me so um yeah I'll say it's not only mind-blowing but also just kind of the idea that you guys have as a band the message you want to put out there you guys are actively putting that in practice with Sleep Society, with your entire fan base, because you are creating that positive moment and that positive connection with other people through your music, through what you've created with that overall group of people. Because, I mean, I still remember when you guys released uh, Sleep Society back in 2021, find out all about the, you know, creating Sleep Society, creating the Patreon around there, creating the community around there. And even one of the songs on there had a bunch of different audio samples from members of Sleep Society included yeah, in there yeah. it's you guys are taking that you know trying to bring positivity in life positivity through your music no matter what topic you're talking about bringing that connection full force and you're actively doing that in practice every single day that is something that speaks to not only the genuineness of you guys but the authenticity that your music is going to have because of it yeah for sure thank you very much um yeah i would ju- yeah i forgot what i was going to say but um yeah, it's something that's always been very important to us. And, you know, the, the Sleep Society is not necessarily like a new idea. You know, look all the way back to Misfits and the Fiend Club and stuff like It's like a fan club. But I think what's great about it is that we've always been like, although we're a metalcore band, we've always had a real strong like punk rock ethic going through the band. We've always been very, very hands on, always like wanted to make sure that our fan base is getting like not necessarily just a product, but the music, the art, the videos, it's all coming from from us guys to the fans. And I think when you start outsourcing a lot of different people, to, to, uh, you're kind of like giving up the artistic licensing in a way to someone else to depict what's important. I think that's what's really great about To The Flowers, you know, not only is it like a heartfelt song that evokes a lot of emotion, but there's also the fact that we basically created a short film to go along with it. And like, we're, we're taking on so much as a band. And, and what's nice is that, you know, we're we're sort of moving into the arena space now and playing playing the biggest shows we've ever played. But actually, we're kind of like the most punk rock we've ever been in terms of how we operate as a band. You know, it feels very it feels very punk to like cut out the middleman and go straight to the fan base and vice versa. So you know, the Sleep Society has like basically funded this last record we've just done, which is an incredible thing to do. Not having to go to a major label and borrowing a load of cash to be in the studio and those sort of things like that can quickly get bands into a shitload of debt. Um, but having that relationship with our fan base where right, they want us to create more music, so they're happy to be a part of the Patreon or, or pre-order the record, and, and you know, that's what that's what we've done. So, yeah, shout out to anyone listening that's a, a fan of the band, not just in the Patreon, not just in the Sleep Society, but anyone anyone out there that's buying a T-shirt, pre-order the record, like everything goes to helping this band continue its journey. And... Um, yeah, it's an exciting time to see where this record takes us and, and what happens in the future. I think one of the most insane things you said there is the fact that you guys are like getting to that arena level, but at the same time are at the most punk rock that you possibly could have been at this given time. Just solely based off the fact that, you know, let, just thinking about it, you guys have had this moment where you guys are able to connect with the fans, you're able to take that overall style and just break it away from, you know, what the middleman is, what everyone else is doing, and just bring it full force for the fans. It brings so much more connection, not only to you, but to the fans. And it's it, uh, it's overall just an incredible piece of work. I am really impressed by it overall. And I just got to say, I saw you kind of freeze up for a bit on the video. Did it freeze up for a bit? <laughs> I did freeze up for a little bit. I think I got the gist, but I was I was out then for a couple of seconds. But it's all good. We're a long oh. distance apart, so we're doing all right. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm gonna I'm gonna blame the fact that there's a big giant thing called the Atlantic Ocean in between us for a little bit of that pause. <laughs> at the same time, not that, but it's also kind of raining here. So if there's any weird connection gaps, oh, yeah. I'm just gonna blame myself for that one. <laughs> 
That's all good. I didn't hear what you said, but I'm sure it was I'm sure it was very cool. <laughs> Essentially, it's just the fact that you guys are on this like arena level now, but also play like the most punk rock. It just speaks to the connection with the fans. But just given the fact that we are in a completely different time frame as you know, in the music world compared to where we were five years ago because of the pandemic, because of how bands had to go through that time period in order to not only survive, but continue to thrive and a different way to connect with fans. People enjoy that connectivity a lot more and they're taking much more stock into it. So the fact that you guys are having this more punk rock style while continuing to grow, it does make a lot of sense and it does show dividends. Yeah, yeah. No, I I agree. It's it's, it's really strange because like, you know, we're not, really a punk band we have elements in our music that can sometimes lean towards like a punk feeling take we take albums like brainwashed for example that was like a punk metal album you know um but it the way that we work and and you know like with this new record self hell we're not following any trends you know trying to sound like the, the bands that are doing well or like trying to sound like anybody else so in a way of like we're not following trends but the, the, the album is funded by our our core fan base in the sleep society and and just all those things rolled in like how we're, we're doing all the old music videos in-house three out of three out of three music videos we've produced ourselves for the new um for the, the new singles on the new record and it's just like that that does feel like almost like a punk movement in itself you know although we're not like rooted like heavily in that we're more metal core whatever but it just feels like what we're doing has that has that undercurrent of punk running through it, which is is, is a good feeling. I mean, it's a great feeling overall because it's kind of like, again, you guys are taking the power back and not having to really have to answer to anybody but yourselves. And you have the fans fully backing you on that. So when you talked earlier about being in the studio, creating this and having that confidence behind it and not having to worry about, you know, maybe some other label because of how big of a backing they put in there, the pressure that might come from there. It's you're having the fans that are being so vocal and, you know, monetarily supportive of you saying, we love the music you have. We love what you're creating. We want you to be you. So go and do that. You guys have the freedom and confidence to do it. And especially listen to the three singles that are off of Self Hell. It is showing up in massive droves. So when it comes to the rest of the songs around the album, I'm looking through the like the, the track list. I'm just like, this is going to be nuts coming out, but I don't know what to expect. <laughs> and that's a beautiful thing because now I get to go in there and think, Okay, when the I listen to the first track, peace of mind. What what's that going to be like? I have no idea. And by the time we get to you know, radical hatred, radical love, is it going to be some ballad? Is it going to smack me in the face? Is it going to be an anthem? I have no idea, but I'm here for it. <laughs> Fuck yeah, bro. I don't think that's like that's the coolest thing about what you know it, the way that people are digesting their music now. It's more like singles, and you might like you might drop onto a band and you kind of like one of their songs. You drag that into your playlist, and then you know that's it you might in a couple of years you hear another one but if you're like if you're into the bands like i'm into some of my favorite bands to the point of like you want to you you want to be surprised you want to see what's coming next you don't just want to be there for one record and then ditch out you're there for the whole journey i think you know that's a bit of an old school way to be you know listen to a full record in full and follow a band in that Mm -hmm. sense but I feel like a lot of the songs off the new record could have been singles, but also as sort of a body of work, they all fit together really well. And that's what's exciting for me. We've never wanted to be a band that sort of sticks to uh, to our laurels and and uh, just finds its genre and just sits in that forever and produces record after record of, of the same genre. Like, I think, you know, the way that Sean Long plays guitar and the way that we utilize our voices, we don't really sound like anyone else. So I think that can really push the boundaries out there as to what we can achieve as a band, where our sound goes in the future, what to expect. And that for me makes, you know, if we can keep our fan base on its toes as to what to expect from a new single or a new record, then that's the way I'd like to, that's like the way I'd like to support a band and, and not be ready for what's coming and have to digest it and listen to an album in full and, and those sorts of things, you know? Oh, absolutely. And you take a look at the bands that are really doing well in the music scene right now. It's the ones that have been popping off over the past couple of years. They're the ones that are doing just that, where they're trying new things and they're keeping you on your toes and you never know exactly what's coming next, but you're excited to see what happens. When I see this, when Bad Omens released Death of Peace of Mind in 2022, honestly, I had no idea that that was going to come out of it. It took me a while to really fully like get into it, but I understood how big it was going to be right from the get-go. Sleep Token last year, I mean, that, no one really saw that coming, but right when it started, it was not stopping. And of course, probably the quintessential band when it comes to trying new things, keeping fans on your on the toes right now. 
who's doing it better than Bring Me the Horizon? Yeah, that, that you know that credit to Bring Me the Horizon and what they've achieved because when they sort of emerged out of the UK scene, there was nothing like it out there. You know, they were playing death metal, but they had like the haircuts and the skinny jeans. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, and they are a force to be reckoned with. So. You know, it, it, it's cool vibes coming out of Sheffield. We've also got Malevolence, if anyone's mm-hmm. heard of them listening to the podcast. Like, great metal band. Um, obviously, Alex was on our song Down, the singer Alex Taylor. Um, so, yeah, there's a good vibe in Sheffield, and it's nice to sort of support other artists coming out of, of Chef. And, and you know, it, there's a, it's a cool city for, for our style of music out here. And, um, yeah, let's let's see some more bands grow out of it. Just keep seeing more bands grow out of it. And I'm one thing I'm really hoping with this album, too, is I know you guys are huge over in the UK. I know that Europe absolutely loves you guys. When it comes to the US, it seems like we're a little bit late to the party on that. But I'm hoping Self Hell is the album that just actually, you know, makes us realize that we've been late to the party. We got to show up in full force. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's you know, I think the, the strange thing about the US for While She Sleeps is that I think to, to really get in people's faces in the US, you have to be out there quite a lot. Um, over the years, I had um, quite a few problems with throat surgery. So, like, I think it was like three albums in a row. Um, I had to go and have surgery on my throat from like t- tearing my vocal cords or whatever. <laughs> um, gnarly stuff. Um, but I remember coming over to one of the warp tours out there and just like, because I was in the States and we didn't really have healthcare out there, I was just like coughing up blood into my hand and making it part of the stage show, you know? Um, but I think that kind of accidentally for our journey with with the states put like gaps into when we could return obviously i was healing up my throat we had to record new music and tour in other places so but we absolutely love it in the states you know so very very excited to get back out with architects and of mice and men um close with all those guys you know it's going to be a fun tour it should be really fun uh, and to anyone that's going to sort of be coming along make sure you turn up early we have like a 35 minute set and we're on the bill first and Believe me, you know, we, we we go hard over an hour set. So half an hour, it's going gonna, gonna to be chaos. Half an hour is going to be chaos. I'll say, don't tell me that because I've got to make it even more chaos when I get to go see you guys play live. And thankfully, I took the day off of work that day because I'm like, there is no way that I'm going to be able to go. Because I'm going to three shows straight in Chicago and I don't live in Chicago. So it's like, all right, back and forth, back and forth. I don't want to end up like dragging myself to one show. And then, of course, the third one is that Architects While She Sleeps of Mice and Men show. And I don't want to miss out any of your set because, I mean... If it's going to be a ripper and it's going to be 35 minutes and you guys only rip like crazy in an hour, you have to condense that down to like one half of that. It's going to be absolute mayhem. I got to be a part of that. Everyone else has to be a part of it. So don't miss out on it. (laughs) That's it, dude. Exactly. I've got a challenge for you. I want you to be the first person to crowd surf during our set when we play Chicago. Oh, my God. first, First person over the barrier. Well, here's the thing. I never really crowd surf ever. But. Wow. Now that that's a challenge, <laughs> I feel like right when the so- right when you guys start, I'd be like, tell my friends, get me up there, get me up there. That's it, that's it. And if everyone else follows, it's the way that the night needs to start for all the bands. So let's get the party going, man. That's how okay. That's how we'll start the night. I'm gonna tell my friends right from the get go. Put me up. We're gonna crowd surf right away, and then I'm gonna run around and get right back in the pit and start just going absolute ape crazy because that just sounds like a fun time. <laughs> there you go, man. Love to see it. <laughs> All right. Well, I got another question for you real quickly because I know we're running out of time, but I like to ask this question. It might be a little bit tough, but we're going to go for it. So I know you've released three tracks off of self hell right now. Now this is going to be like picking your favorite child, which is never going to be an easy thing. But if you had one track that has not been released from self hell, that is like, okay, everyone make sure you check out this track when it releases, what track would that be? That's a tough one because (laughs) there's a lot of different vibes across the record um for me at the moment i would say enemy mentality um it's pretty sexy it's pretty dark and din- dirty uh but also it has like a huge breakdown section so you know it's uh for me enemy mentality would be a good one sexy dark dingy and a huge breakdown oh dear god okay is it <laughs> is it is it the 29th yet i gotta listen to this thing because <laughs> <laughs> That's it. All right. Well, I got one more before we wrap this up. And this is something I love to ask a bunch of different bands. And I'm glad I get to ask you this because not only does it help us as fans get to know more about the music that you love, but just get to check out more new music and support more in general. So Laz, can you name me 
three bands that you absolutely love right now that you would love to get more people into and get more exposure on? Yes, uh, Guilt Trip. Um, they're like a bit like they're like thrashy metalcore from from uh, like Leeds, not too far from here. Um, really, really riff bass, really screamy, kind of like hardcore, but then also have like some lovely clean sections, but not like you would hear in just a normal modern modern metalcore band. It's a bit more gritty, a bit more two thousands. Uh, so I'd say Guilt Trip. Uh, I'd also say a band called Mouth Culture. Um, they are signed to In Vogue, which is a label out in the states, and they're kind of like they're kind of like more indie rock um, with kind of like a pop edge as well. But like, kind of think of bands like Incubus or Yumi at Six, um, just to name something that they might be into. They're they're a really great band. Kind of they played with us in Sheffield a few weeks back. Um, a show that we did for Christmas and they absolutely smashed it, getting a lot of love at the moment. So yeah, check them out too. Um, and just a random one that nobody will have heard of, but if you're into like stoner rock kind of blues stuff, there's a band called Lucifer in the Sky with Diamonds and they're incredible, relatively unknown. So if you like to be, you know, if you're one of those people that likes to hear bands first or, or you know, listen to the stuff that not a lot of people know about, that's a good one for sure. Those are three great picks. I've never heard of Lucifer in the Sky with Diamonds, but I love the name just from the get-go. So yeah, that is awesome. Out called, check out a song called Save Your Breath by Lucifer in the Sky. It's fucking great. Well, when I have to go back to work right after this, I'm probably going to put that on also while working on this whole entire episode. So thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> I really appreciate it, man. No worries, bro. No worries. Yeah. All right. Well, oh, again, yeah. Laz, thank you very much for your time today. I'm going to end this episode with three specific things. First things first, Self Hell, the brand new While She Sleeps album comes out on March 29th, and you're not going to want to miss out on it. You're not going to want to miss out when they come to the States and tour with Architects and the Mice and Men. And if you're going to be anywhere near that Chicago area and you want to go to the Chicago show, go and do it because, well, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be in the pit and try and beat me to be the first one up crowd surfing because I got a challenge now and I'm not going to lose that challenge. So the best way to looking out for you, bro. I'll be looking out for you. <laughs> Perfect. So the best way to make sure that you get to the album, you stream it, you pre-save it, you order violent, you pre-order it, you get some merch, you get contracts and you follow along with the band on all social media platforms. Description of the podcast where it says while she sleeps uh, for find while she sleeps online. Links and labels are all going to be down there for you. So you have no reason not to get in the band. I am doing all the hard work for you. I'm your own personal Google on this. So go make sure you check that out and do not miss out on it. Now it's time for number two. Laz, whenever I've guessed the podcast, I enjoy the podcast. I tend to make a certain promise as a way to say thank you. And I wish I could support the band in the future. And I usually start off by saying when, because I never have a day or time, but I've got a day or time. That's Chicago show. I'm going to be that first person up crowd surfing. You're not going to miss me. And it, my promise to you is I'm going to find you at some point during the show after you're set. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to try and figure it out. But I will find you. I will come say hi. But my promise is first round's on me. Okay, yeah, bro. Sounds good. Um, Usually when we play a support tour, we will definitely go hang, hang out at the merch, meet people that have been waiting to see us for a while, have a chat. So, yeah, I'll be there, bro. Hopefully can meet you as well as a lot of other fans that are into the band or enjoy the show. And, yeah, we'll hang out for sure. Oh, perfect. Now, I'm looking even more forward to that, but I just got to make sure I'm the first person up crowd surfing that whole entire show. So, got to make sure that happens. <laughs> and now it's time for number three. Bringing this to a conclusion, I cannot say goodbye because, dude, this was a lot of fun. I would love to be back on the podcast again in the future. On top of that, I'm going to be able to see you live in a couple of months anyway. And got to make good on that promise. Got to make good on that challenge. So I can't say goodbye. That's too final. This is, I'll see you later. See you soon, bro. Woo! Well, folks, I'm interview with Laz from the band While She Sleeps. And now it's time for Kevin's final thought. And this is going out specific to the Sleep Society and what they have done for While She Sleeps. And you think about just the fact that they really built these last two albums and this one, you know, got to make sure this one's called out with self-help based off of the backing and the support from the sleep society and you can tell that has brought the band so much more confidence into trying different things staying out of just this one specific lane and allowing them to experiment with their overall style and know that the fans are going to support it based on the fact that they are connected not only to how the guys create their stuff musically but also the overall message and 
when you listen to self help, listen to the titular track, it's different. I was thrown off by it, but when I got rid of those embedded thoughts of like, you know, this is what I want them to be like, I want to be like how they were when they released Sleep Society, the single, when they released Systematic off of it. You know, I got to take and just expect, you know, the unexpected. When To The Flowers dropped and I listened to that one, the guitar on that song is so immaculate. It's one of the best guitar parts I have heard post-pandemic. I mean, this might be the best guitar work I've seen since the Doomsday riff. That is saying a lot because there have been a lot of great guitar work, works out there, a lot of great guitars, but man, was that just something that has taken more of this Architects meets While She Sleeps meets the 1980s meets Prince. Yes, I said Prince. Don't get me wrong on that. I said it. But it just shows just how great that this band really is connecting to their fans, understanding the power that they have, you know, over band success overall and just really connecting with them and creating that moment where people are going to be part of the sleep society and it's going to be a beautiful thing you should be a part of it as well and make sure you follow along with while she sleeps go straight to the podcast floor it says find while she sleeps online links labels for everything you're going to be down there in order to pre-order pre-save self hell get tickets for when they're coming to the u.s touring with architects make sure you join the sleep society and follow along with social media all is going to be down there also make sure you follow along with us in the corporate rush podcast facebook twitter instagram link description down below hit subscribe right down here on youtube new episodes of the podcast every single tuesday and thursday and friday reaction videos as well if you're on spotify apple Podcasts, you get the full episode still every single tuesday and thursday so go follow us on there like these episodes and push us in the algorithm thank you laws and that challenge you gave me I'm taking it wholeheartedly. So on that note, that's what you guys think for much listening to the Chord Progression Podcast. My name is Kevin, and you guys know how I end every single one. He's absolutely big, healthy, and hearty. See ya! Yeah!